Hi, welcome. I'm so glad you were able to join us via YouTube today. I'm sorry that you can't be with us in person, but we wanted to make sure that you had a chance to hear our Bible story for today as well. So I'm really excited to start, but before we do, I want to remind you of the memory verse that we have been studying. So don't forget to practice it. It's Proverbs 1, 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. Okay, so I'm going to begin our story. So I'm taking us all the way back to Babylon, and we're going back to King Nebuchadnezzar. You knew it. And so King Nebuchadnezzar is in Babylon, and he's happy, and he's contented, and everything is going really well. I mean, he's the king, right? And one night, he's sleeping in his bed, but all of a sudden, he has a dream that frightens him. Have you ever had a dream that frightened you? I have. So he did too. In fact, the images and the visions in his mind, the Bible says they terrified him. And he woke up and he called for all of the wise men in Babylon to come. He called for his astrologers, his magicians, his enchanters, his diviners. He called for them all to come. And he said to them, listen, I have had a dream, and I know that it is no ordinary dream. This was a really special dream, and I know that it has a meaning, but I don't know what the meaning is. I need you guys to tell me what this dream means. So King Nebuchadnezzar told them his dream, but you know what? None of them could tell him what the dream meant. And do you know why? Well, it's because those magicians and enchanters and diviners and astrologers, they were looking for the answers in the wrong place. And what we know is that the dream came from God. And the only one who could tell us the meaning of the dream then was God. Well, in comes Daniel. Daniel comes in and we know that there's something special about Daniel. Do you remember what's special about Daniel? That's right. Daniel was a follower, like we are, of the one true God. In fact, King Nebuchadnezzar knew that there was something special about Daniel. That's why King Nebuchadnezzar had given Daniel a special name. You remember that he gave Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Remember those new names? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were not their original names. Those were their Babylonian names. And Daniel's Babylonian name was Belshazzar. Now, Belshazzar was the name of King Nebuchadnezzar's God. And King Nebuchadnezzar, he thought that Daniel had the spirit of the gods in him. Now, we know that that's actually not what made Daniel different. And actually, King Nebuchadnezzar soon found out that that was not what made Daniel different. But for now, that's what he thought. Now, we know that Daniel was different because he followed and he prayed to and he worshipped the God of the Bible. Well, Daniel comes in and King Nebuchadnezzar says to Daniel, Belshazzar, chief of all of my wise men, I've had this dream. And I know that you have the spirit of the gods in you and that all mysteries are revealed to you. That you know all these things. Nothing can stump you. And he said, so I'm going to tell you this dream and I want you to interpret it. Well, he was a little bit bossy, but you know what? He was king, so he got to be bossy. He was used to being bossy. Well, he tells Daniel his dream. He says, I saw a tree, and it wasn't just an ordinary tree. It was standing in the middle of a field, and it was an enormous tree with enormous height. In fact, it grew so large and so strong and so tall that it touched the sky. And its leaves, well, I think they were prettier than these. It, the leaves were wonderful. And it had fruit on it. We don't have fruit, but the tree had fruit on it, wonderful fruit, lots of fruit. And it had food, and it fed all the animals and all the people. It was an amazing tree. And it actually sheltered all of the animals. So I have some animals here who are going to find some shelter. So we've got my little opossum. So he's going to find shelter underneath the tree. And we've got our panda bear. He's going to find some shelter. 
And we've got old oh, little Mousy. He's gonna find some shelter there. And oh, little turtle, he's gonna find some shelter. There we go, it's a good spot for you. And my cheetah, he's gonna sit back here. And the aardvark, he's gonna sit right there. My, All right, so they all found shelter under the branches of the tree. And the birds of the air, they found shelter in its branches. So we've got our flamingo, he's gonna sit up here. Good job. And we've got our little ducky and he's gonna sit in there. And we don't know what kind of bird he is, but he's gonna sit here. Oh, my flamingo decided to fly away, but he's gonna come back. All right, here he is. You can find a spot right in there. All right, so the birds of the air, they found shelter in its branches and all of the animals and all of the living creatures got their food from the tree. Well, everything was happy, it was all great. But then a messenger from heaven came and he called out and he said, cut down the tree, trim off its branches, strip off its leaves, scatter its fruit on the ground and let all of the birds of the air go away and not be in its branches anymore. And all the animals scatter from underneath it. Uh-oh. Well, that's very sad. And let the roots of the tree and the stump of the tree remain in the ground bound with iron and bronze. My goodness. And then the messenger said something a little strange. He was talking about the tree, but he started saying, let him be soaked with dew from heaven and let him live with the animals and the plants and let his mind be changed from that of a man to that of an animal until seven years have passed. This decision is announced by messengers from heaven so that everyone alive on the whole earth will know that God Most High is king over all of the kingdoms of the whole world. And he lets anyone that he wishes be ruler of them, even the lowliest of men. And when Daniel heard this dream, he was very upset. In fact, he was terrified in his mind. And King Nebuchadnezzar, he saw that and he said, Belshazzar, don't, don't let this dream or its message alarm you. Well, King Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel said, if this only could apply to somebody else, to one of your enemies and not you. But, O oh, King, you are this tree, this wonderful tree in your dream. It's you. You know what? You've become a strong king and a very amazing king. And you have a large, enormous kingdom that you rule over. But God has issued a decree against you, O king. You know what? God said that you're going to be driven away from people. And you're going to live with the wild animals and the plants. And you're going to eat grass like cattle do. And you're going to be soaked with dew from heaven for seven years until you acknowledge that God is the most high king. And that he's king over all. And that he makes rulers of anyone he chooses. The stump and the roots, they're going to stay in the ground. And that tells us, O king, that Eventually, you will become king again, but only when you acknowledge that God is king over everything and everyone. Well, then Daniel turned to King Nebuchadnezzar, and he said, King, King Nebuchadnezzar, take my advice. He said, stop doing what's wrong. Do what's right. Stop your wickedness and show compassion to the oppressed. And maybe, maybe this won't happen to you. Well, the Bible doesn't tell us what King Nebuchadnezzar thought of Daniel's advice. But it does tell us that 12 months passed, a whole year. And one day, King Nebuchadnezzar was in his palace, and he's walking around, 
And he looked around and he said, my, look at this wonderful kingdom that I have built for myself, this kingdom of Babylon that I've built to be my royal residence by my own mighty hand and to show how wonderful I am. And he hadn't even finished those boastful words before a voice came from heaven. And the voice said, King Nebuchadnezzar, right now it's finished. You will be driven away from people. You are not going to be king anymore. You're going to be driven away from people, and you're going to live amongst the cattle. You're going to eat grass like the cattle. The dew from heaven is going to drench you. And seven years are going to pass until you acknowledge that God is king over all, and he gives kingdoms to whomever he chooses. Wow. Well, as soon as that happened, King Nebuchadnezzar lost his mind. And he went out. He was driven away from people. He went out and he lived in the wild with the animals. In fact, his hair grew so long and covered his body. And it covered his body sort of like the feathers covered an eagle. And his nails grew long and thick like the claws of a bird. And at the end of seven years, King Nebuchadnezzar, raised his head towards heaven and looked up. And his sanity was restored. He wasn't crazy anymore. And he praised the most high God. And he honored and glorified him. And this is what he said. This is what he declared. He said, God's dominion is an eternal dominion. His kingdom endures for generation to generation. All the peoples of the earth are regarded as nothing. He does what he pleases with the powers of heaven and the peoples of the earth, no one can hold back his hand or say to him, what have you done? Well, King Nebuchadnezzar became king again, just as God had said he would. And not only that, but he became an even greater king than before. And this is what he said about God. He said, everything God does is right and all his ways are fair. And those who are proud... God is able to humble. <clears throat> and that is our Bible story for this week. If you would like to read it for yourself, you can find it in the Old Testament book of Daniel, chapter 4. Bye for now.